Wizard needs food badly. Elf shot the food. Sonic 2 handles stubborn stains. Embarrassing bald spots, no problem. It even Have you ever stopped and taken a good look at video game ads? They're basically 30 second movies made to get you excited to convince you to buy either a console or a video game. Whenever I search for video game ads on YouTube, what I usually get is a bombardment of ads from the US or Japan. Which, you know, YouTube is an American company, so its contents will be more focused in the US, Canada, the UK and whatever interests those countries might have. But now here's the thing, I'm Portuguese, so the commercials that I used to watch were very different. And I guess that just got me thinking. Just what did video game commercials look like across the world? You might think that video game ads are the same everywhere, but as we'll soon find out, that is actually not true. They will vary greatly depending on where you're from. Now, this video is not by any means a comprehensive list of video game ads, but instead we'll be taking a look at a few samples from across several countries. Starting with the US and Canada, I think it's safe to say that their commercials generally went big. We're talking big productions, the Hollywood of video game advertising. You're in a spaceship and controller shootout. You're fighting Mike Tyson with a power glove on a giant CRT television. A barbarian invades your bedroom decked out in full combat gear while fighting giant monsters. And Darth Vader will explode in your bedroom. They're big, they're epic and they're cool as heck. Even if they don't make a whole lot of sense. Like this commercial for Golden Sun on the Game Boy Advance. And this was not something that began with just the NES. Even the Atari 2600 had impressive ads. Yes? You look like a real jerk. Well, I am a corporate executive. He stops exciting things from happening. So what you doing? Well, Muffy Buffy Biff Jr. and I are going on our Sunday drive. Oh, no, you're not. You're going to play pole position. But I did notice that they became more grounded as the 16-bit generation rolled around. Suddenly, it was more about the kids in school, or being the cool kid, or the cool teenager. If you're not playing these games, you're a giant loser. We were now seeing more advertisement which took place in realistic settings. But just because the scale was smaller, it does not mean that they skimped out on their production values. This Sega CDN 32X ad should have been super simple in theory. But look at how they went all out with it. Look at the camera angles, the lighting, the hard work put into something that at its heart should have been just a basic commercial. This is not to say that epic commercials would come to an end, just that we would gradually see a shift towards more day-to-day -day settings. Japan, on the other hand, their commercials seem more or less to fall into one of three categories. First you have the cosplay commercials. These are very similar to the US big budget ads. But the difference is that in the US, the focus was on the kids playing the games. Sure, Darth Vader is invading your home, but you're still the hero. The barbarian from Wizards and Warriors is fighting a giant monster near you. But only you can save the day. The fate of the world is in your hands! Back by a beast! But in Japan, you are not the hero. They are. 
Aeolus is the heroine of Fantasy Star, and she's the one fighting a lizard man. Samus is flying towards the screen, decked out in full armor. But you're not the hero, she is. In this series of Street Fighter Reds, it's never implied that you control the characters and that therefore you're the hero. No, they're the heroes and they're cool. And if you buy the game, you can feel what it's like to be just like them. Now, my personal favorite actually goes to this Fantasy Star 4 ad, which recreates key scenes from the game with Western actors in full cosplay gear. Man, I wish I had gotten those commercials in my country. The second type of commercial that Japan seems to have gotten was the anime ad. That is to say, they would use anime footage to get you excited and buy the game. Sometimes it's because the game is actually based on an anime, while other times, game companies would actually commission the animation for their game and for that specific ad. Examples include Bomberman, Mega Man, Street Fighter and the list goes on. Finally, we have the weird ads. These are, of course, your rapping Japanese Zeldas, your Mega Man riding bikes, and of course, your Segata Sanshiros. A series of ads where a middle-aged karate man would go around Japan beating up people for not playing the Sega Saturn. Now, I categorize them as weird ads, but really, most of these are just meant to be humorous in nature. Though I will admit I still don't quite get what Nintendo was aiming for with the Japanese Zelda rap. But, then again, I'm also not sure what Nintendo was aiming for with the American Zelda rap. It's the Legend of Zelda and it's really rad. Those creatures from Ghana are pretty bad. The thing is, for as big and crazy as game commercials became in Japan, their beginnings were actually pretty humble. Have you seen the first Famicom ads? They are surprisingly subdued. Though once the Famicom became a runaway hit in Japan, it would not take them long to up the production values. With that said though, even during this more humble era, you would still get the occasional weird ad, like this Sega SG-1000 commercial. But look, I don't want to spend too much time talking about Japan or the US. If you're watching this video, chances are you've already seen them before. So what I really want to talk about is the rest of the world. Now, the US and Japan were the highlight of big game commercials. But countries like the UK, France and Brazil would also create some really impressive ones as well. But we'll get to that. The truth is, outside of these five nations, the rest of the world would, more often than not, simply receive dubbed versions of whatever ads were produced in the US or the UK. Take for example this Super Mario Land 2 ad and its many, many dubs. Obey me, Wario. I am your master. Mario is your enemy. Helft mir, Wario. In fact, it seems that this was Nintendo's strategy for most of the world. Simply take whatever commercials were made in America and just dub them in every language. Something's gone wrong in the happy-go-lucky world of Nintendo. Try to think of any Nintendo commercial you've seen as a kid, and chances are it's been dubbed to just about every language you can think of. Hey, little buddy, want to ride? Pikachu! Yeah, whatever! <laughs> A 
I'll be right back. Pikachu! Yeah, yeah, Sandy. Eu não vou mesmo nada. Sega did seem to give more freedom to its local distributors. But if they were not willing to invest in production values for commercials in that region, you would often end up with something like this commercial from Chile, which would simply reuse footage from commercials made in other countries. But this wasn't always the case. Sometimes, local distributors would create their own commercials with varying degrees of production values. On the lower end, you would have something like the Italian ZX Spectrum commercials. I mean, for all intents and purposes, these are pretty basic commercials. It's just some gameplay footage, followed by some panning shots of the computer and games. But the thing is, if you're not American, Canadian, Japanese, British, French or from Brazil, outside of foreign redubs, these were actually the most common original game advertisements you'd see in your country. Ironically, sometimes a commercial would be redubbed to the same language. Take for example, this US commercial for Mario All-Stars. He's back, he's here, he's Mario, knows the new and improved Mario and Super Mario All-Stars so much. Mario is a Mario smorgasbord. It's all the way down Mario Brothers adventures he ever played and then some. But this is Juice Star 16-bit only on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System Mario. So it's bigger Mario, better Mario, in your face Mario. It's Raccoon Mario, Mario throwing fireballs. He's Mario back, he's here, he's Mario, and Mario 1, 2, and 3, plus the never before seen lost levels. But this is new and improved four games in one Mario. A new Super Mario All-Star, so much Mario, it's a Mario smorgasbord. It's Juice Star 16-bit only on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System Mario. So it's brighter Mario, better Mario, in your face Mario, it's Raccoon Mario. But sometimes, local distributors would go the extra mile and pump out some really interesting commercials. We have, for example, this set of commercials of the NES in India, known over there as the Samurai. And I'm not gonna lie, I kinda love this next ad. Samurai, the electronic TV game system. Just what are they trying to communicate here? School violence? I'm not even sure what is going on with this commercial. Is the kid imagining he's fighting his bullies? Is he in a virtual reality match? Just what is going on here? Now, my personal favorite is when they remake ads. That is to say, when they take a commercial that already exists and recreate it with new actors and new sets. I'm sure you're all familiar with this Sega CD ad. What are you waiting for, Nintendo to make one? <laughs> but did you know that it was remade in both India and Brazil? Ooh. Hey kid, what you doing watching this stupid film? Don't you want to have fun playing Sega? Sega? Sega who? Wrong answer, pal. Show him! It's new! It's wild! It's Sega! International Sega TV games are now here! From Shaw Wallace! Hey kid! Want some more? Yeah, yeah! Unlock your mind! Sega! Vocês querem ver o futuro? Então saque para o mundo animal! Mega Drive Sega CD! Sega Sega! Oh, and do you see that skull from the Brazilian ad? That was actually taken from Sega's Pirate TV in the UK. And that character would also be adapted into the Sega report in Portugal. And we've already talked about the Japanese Zelda rap commercial. But did you know that it was also remade in South Korea? Super Mario Bubble Bubble, 
가맨 스테이리 닌자 거북이 신나고 재미있는 현대 카운 컴보이 따타 마리오 드래곤 퀘스트 닌텐도 월드컵 젤다의 전설 우리들 기분을 잘 안다 마음에 쏙 드는 친구 신비의 나라 꿈의 구전으로 신나는 놀이 재미있어 컴보이한테 못하겠다니까 신나고 재미있는 현대 컴보이 and then of course, we have these avant-garde Sega Saturn promos in the US, which would be remade in Brazil. You are approaching Saturn. You are only seconds away. I have arranged for you to meet my... companion. We are five years away from entering the 21st century. Humankind stands on the edge. Faltam cinco segundos para o século XXI. Sega Saturn. Now let's go back a bit. Remember that Indian Sonic commercial? Did you notice how Sonic was actually talking? Wrong answer, pal. This was well before Sonic had an official voice in the games. In fact, with the exception of the cartoon series, Sega of America went through a lot of trouble to not give Sonic a voice in anything. That's no good. Take for example this Cheerios commercial, in which the Cheerios B does all the talking. <laughs> It's the honey nutty part of this complete breakfast. Hey Sonic, how can I be as good as you? But other nations weren't quite so squeamish about voicing Sonic. For example, here's Brazilian Sonic. Oi! Eu sou o Sonic! E esse é o meu amigo Tails! Nós estamos no jogo Sonic 2! <laughs> Agora o Super Roma Sinigui está mais diabólico! Não fiquei parado! <laughs> Yeah, the voice they chose was kinda terrible, but it's still better than the Spanish Sonic. Ya he vuelto. Y ahora traigo para vosotros los anuncios más guapos de Sega. No despistéis ni un pelito, son un punto. Estaros al loro. And then there's also Italian Sonic. Oh, but don't worry, Mario also had his fair share of dubs, starting with Portuguese Mario. I know the dude only says one short line, but man, it's actually not that far off from Charles Martinet's voice. But you also have French Mario. A partir d'aujourd'hui, il est hors la loi, non qu'à bien se tenir, voici Robocop. Il n'y va pas de ma mort avec les escrocs et les criminels de toutes sortes. Spanish Mario. Hola amigos consoleros, estáis atentos o estáis en el alero. No os mováis ni una micra y mirad la pantallita. Esto es pura dinamita. And South Korean Mario. And the Super Cowboy. Now, sometimes, countries with looser copyright laws would sometimes add whatever popular names or characters they could to sell their systems. For example, in Brazil, they would kinda sorta but not really use Freddy Krueger and Texas Chainsaw Massacre to sell the NES over there. Phantom System, video game de última geração. Compre essa briga.
Quantum System. Nunca foi tão emocionante ficar em casa. But honestly, nothing beats South Korea's blatant misuse of copyright in this Super Nintendo ad which uses Mario, Street Fighter, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Tiny Toons and God knows what else. Oh, and funny thing, this commercial is yet another remake, this time for a Model 2 Japanese Famicom commercial. But this seems to be par for the course for South Korea. From using Star Wars music in its radio commercial, to the Robocop fried chicken ad, which uses Back to the Future background music. Oh, what the hell fried the chicken? Speaking of regional differences, I've noticed that in the US, it seemed that it was commonplace to badmouth your competition. We're all already familiar with the Genesis does ads. What Nintendo? But Sega was not the only one. And NEC did it as well. And so did the Atari Jaguar. Sega Genesis is 16 bits, 3DO is 32 bits, the Atari Jaguar is 64 bits, which is more advanced. The 3DO. If you're not playing on a 3DO system, what are you playing with? But as far as I can tell, this sort of trash talk was exclusive to the US. No matter which other country I looked at, I could not find any commercial where they just straight up trash talk the competition. Instead, they would simply promote their own system or games. Another interesting point is how individual game advertisements worked. In the US and Japan, it would be up to the publishers themselves to promote their own games. Double Dragon 2 from Acclaim, the best action game ever! Such as Konami promoting Castlevania or Capcom selling Mega Man. But in most of the world, the local distributor was in charge of everything. So for example, Mortal Kombat 2 for the Mega Drive was promoted in Brazil through Tectoy, which was the official Sega of Brazil and not by its actual video game developer and publisher Acclaim. And this is something you would see in most video game commercials in most countries, where the local distributor would often be promoting third-party games that may or may not be available for the competition as well. Ok, so this video is getting kind of long, so we're just going to run very quickly to some bullet points now. France would also sometimes create their own commercials. For Sega, they had the Sega Master, a motorcycle punk dude who apparently almost dies in playing Sega. Ironically, I'm pretty sure that this advertisement was a major visual inspiration for Paprium, a game on the Sega Genesis that would launch some 30 years later. For some reason, there was a strange period when Europe and Australia loved creepy talking CRT televisions in their game commercials. We have this Nintendo commercial which aired in Australia. We are Nintendo Ultimate TV Game System. We challenge all players. You cannot beat us. Aim your Zapakan. You cannot beat us. Even with your robot partner. You cannot beat us. So one million. But then you also have this weird French Master System commercial. C'est encore moi. Tu m'as toujours pas branché. Alors je trouve sympa. Bruce moi sur une Sega. T'as noté? T'as noté? C'est. Ga. What the hell 
was that? And this Spanish Sega commercial where apparently your television just outright kidnaps your children. Hey, chicos, ¿qué hacéis ahí tan aburridos? Conectad la videoconsola Sega. ¿Sega? Venga, rápido, la videoconsola Sega. ¿Listos para entrar en el mundo de los héroes? Sí, lo estamos. Con más de 100 aventuras diferentes. ¡Allá vamos! Únete a los héroes con la videoconsola Sega. What the hell was that? But as the years went by and gaming became more mainstream, I can't help but feel like game commercials became less interesting. I'm not saying that we should go back to the playground desk antics of the 90s, especially considering how extreme people can be on the internet. But I feel that a lot of video game commercials today are just kind of boring. We have this Xbox 360 Indian commercial that is almost one minute long and yet it doesn't even show the console until the last 5 seconds. And the less said about Sony's avant-garde PS3 commercials, the better. Rule of thumb people, if you're gonna try to sell something to a mass audience, avant-garde commercials is generally not the way to go. But my problem is that these region-specific ads are a thing of the past. Today, you'll see almost the exact same commercials across the world. So in the end, it seems that dubbing won. But with that said, you still occasionally get some interesting game commercials. The PS3 Kevin Butler ads, for example, were witty and charming. Dear PlayStation, my grandma won't stop watching Blu-ray movies on my PS3. Look, for 299 bucks, you don't just get a sweet gaming machine. It's like you get the best Blu-ray player around built in for free. You know how old people like free stuff. Yeah, but I... Do you know what she did for fun when she was your age? She pushed a hoop with a stick. But I want to play... With a stick. I've been waiting... Stick. And if you do want to try an avant-garde commercial to sell your system, well, the good news is there's a French Xbox 360 commercial that, in my opinion, created one of the best modern adverts I've ever seen. Là, c'est mon copain, François. Sa passion, c'est les jeux vidéo. Mais ce n'était pas toujours facile de jouer. Quand François était encore petit, sa maman se prenait toujours les pieds dans les fils. Un vrai sac de nœuds par terre. Ce qu'il pouvait les détester, ses fils. Et il rêvait d'un monde libre d'attaches. Il a grandi, François, maintenant. Il peut enfin jouer sans fil. La liberté. Oh, c'est moi, Alain. On joue toujours ensemble. C'est moi qui gagne d'habitude. Mais ça ne l'embête pas, François. Il est heureux et libre dans son monde sans fil. This commercial is perfect. I I'm sorry, but it really is perfect, if you ask me. But I think we have time for one more cursed commercial. This time, courtesy of Brazil. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Stickers Retro Corner. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell and share this video. All that fun social media stuff. And you can also support me on Patreon. It may not seem like it, but even $1 is a really big help in keeping this channel going. I also want to thank my newest Patreon supporter, NathanielQ794. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Bye!